If you've ever gone through a vintage cookbook, you've probably come across a few questionable jello recipes, with many calling for layering the wiggly substance. Thankfully, our next guest is here with a modern take that you'll actually want to eat. Stacy Perry Mergenthal is the head baker behind Random Sweets. She's here today to show us how we can make a refreshing jello layer dessert that will make you the envy of the church potluck. <laughs> I'm not even sure you could get out of the church potluck after having served this because everybody would be surrounding you, asking right. you how you did all of these intricate layers. They came up with such a fun plan. So yeah. where do you start? Well, this this goes back to the old school layered jello and uh, people would use like a bunk pan or a, a mold and then it was all one thing and you'd flip it upside down and have all these layers that look like in a bunk pan. But what I've done is made it more portable, more for a party, a little bit more fun. Uh, we need to experiment on doing some Jello shot type, but okay, right yeah. now some these are all non-alcoholic. Right? Okay. These are all non-alcoholic, and so really it's just buying different colors of gelatin or Jello that you want to uh, do with themes. So, okay, I, so let's walk to the themes. Yeah. So I was thinking if you did a little baby shower, you could do all pink or all blue, or if you're doing a gender reveal or something like that, you could do both, um, and then just stick in some little. Little, little picks and I found some fun marshmallows. I like marshmallows in my jello, which is very old school. And people would appreciate that though, especially at a baby shower. You're definitely gonna have some people like probably visiting your baby shower that are maybe of a time when right. marshmallows belonged in jello for sure. Right. So they will be happy you did that. Right. Okay. Right. So that one's kind of fun. And then I the rainbows are my favorite. So this you could do for a end of the summer party, you could do a pool party, you could do if you're doing a pride party. Perfect uh, for pride. Right. Things, uh, if you're doing Bible school or Sunday school and teaching about Noah's Ark and yeah. doing the rainbows, anything like that. So those are really fun. You could do your school colors. So okay. if you wanted to do, this would be maybe like the Jackrabbits, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I know some fans <laughs> of that. Possibly. Okay. Uh, so you could take those to tailgating. And these are just in cute little, um, like yeah. little wine glasses or parfait cups. And those are plastic, so you can just throw them away. Whereas some of them I have in actual like jar. glass jars, okay. and so you'd want to do it when you want those jars back if you're in a place. But and then I did something jars. for fall that would be like a candy corn, something for Halloween. Well, that's a good idea because I think we think of Jell-O as a summer mm -hmm. treat, but really you can keep going with it sure. year round and get Red different and green things. for Christmas. I've done the 4th of July. The red, yeah. white, and blue is super fun. and. They have little marshmallows that are in the shapes of stars, so you, you can, can totally pop in the that. stars. Mm -hmm. But how do you put this many layers together? <laughs> so how first, long did it take? Right, so first of all, you want to have some time at home because okay. the two layer ones, well, actually, they look like four layer. It's two colors. Those take about an hour per layer. So, um, so I'm an sorry. an hour per layer? An, an hour per color, an actually. An hour per color, yeah. okay. So these are about two, two hours. hours. These are about six hours. Okay because you have to let the bottom layer set a little bit before you can put the next layer on, and then that has to set before you can put the next color on. Okay, so walk me through, for example, this rainbow one, because mm -hmm. when I first walked up to you, I thought that you had like a jello and then like a whipped cream or a pudding type thing, but right. it's all jello layers, and I didn't know you could add it things is. that were like solid right. to a so jello. So don't, don't panic for those people who don't like sour cream. I have okay. a sister who doesn't like sour cream, uh, but what you're doing is you make the first color of jello, and then you put in a very thin layer so you can see at the bottom, here's the purple layer. Mm -hmm. And then I have about half of the jello left and then you add in a couple tablespoons of sour cream. Okay. Sounds weird, but there's so much sugar in there that it's super sweet and it makes it really creamy and light and fluffy. It's delicious. And then, then you it still do, sets up. It sets up, then you do the next layer just the same so you can kind of see these little lighter mm -hmm. layers. It just is a jello that has a little bit of sour cream mixed into it. And that's what you're doing for each of these? Yes. Mm -hmm. Can I try one? Because I've never you had sure sour can. cream and jello. Which one should I do? Uh, any of them that you want. Um, well, I'll go Jack's. Okay. <laughs> I'll, that'll make my family happy. Yeah, okay. and then I usually will add a little bit of whipping cream, but you have to do that right before you're serving. Otherwise, it's not going to stay. It'll start to fall apart. But Okay, you're right. I cannot taste sour cream. No. Let me get in the bottom it's layer. It's probably pretty sweet. It's actually really good jello. <laughs> I didn't think I liked jello. Well, and the kids really love it, and it's just something fun. I mean, it's different than cake, or, I mean, obviously you're still going to be able to serve that type of thing, but it just makes it more fun for the, for the theme. And like I said, my rainbows are still some of my favorite ones. The sour cream actually makes it really good. I know. It's a, just a whole nother like creaminess. I try not to tell people what's in it because for people who don't like sour cream, it just seems too weird. 
But we all know I'm really picky, so I'm telling you, it doesn't taste like sour cream. No. It's mm -hmm. really good. Yep, yep. So like the old traditional um, jello mold kind of bunt cake type things mm -hmm. that have other things in them, could you put the stuff directly in this as you're layering it too? Like, would you ever put the mini marshmallows in it as you're going? Or like, what, pineapple? Oh, yeah, there's people who, oh, my husband puts carrots and mandarin oranges, what? I think, in his, maybe. Uh, yeah, it goes back to the, the old school days of what your grandparents and what your parents used to make for you. But I'm going to pass in the carrots. I know, me too. I don't eat it. Uh, but I think you could do your fruits in here if you wanted to. Now, the marshmallows, I don't really know what would happen. I yeah. think I would stick to just popping those on the top. But you, you could certainly just do a big glass bowl. That would be beautiful and stunning. People would just spoon it in. But there's just something fun about getting yourself a little little treat yeah, like this off the Yeah, really mini one. They are really cute. Yeah. Have you ever done one where you've actually tipped it out of the mold? I have not. Because I'm wondering, I think this would be fun like that too. Like you could do a modern take but still do the mold. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how you would get it out. Well, it just comes out because it's jello. I think it just, you kind of are going to set, set it, say, in a warm water so that it kind of loosens up. I mean, not, not the whole thing, but just so that the mm -hmm. bottom and then loosens it and you should be able to flip it. And they make those silicone bunt pan jello type molds. Right. And that one would be a lot easier. That would be fun too. So I think you could do, say, like the layers of blue, different blue colors, and maybe get some of those Swedish fish. Oh, yeah. Right? I bet you could bury those in the layer, and it would look like the fish are swimming around. You could do I a lot know, of things. I tons mean, of ideas. Who knew that the world was our jello oyster? I didn't, <laughs> in fact. But did you have any of these right. fail? Like, was there anything along the way of making this oh, jello that just so, didn't work? Yes, I'm so glad that you asked, because although I can't pick one right now, but I do have some in here that actually... I poured in the next layer a little too soon, mm -hmm. so it wasn't quite set up. Well, then it starts to come down into the I bottom. I think this one right here is like that. Yep, and yeah. then, you, then you can see it mixes together, so you really do have to be patient. I set the timer on my phone, and I go off and do something else. The kids would have fun with this. Their attention span's only 15, 20 minutes anyway, so let them do a layer. Mm -hmm. You set the timer. Everybody meets back at the kitchen. Do the next layer. It's kind of fun and it's good for a rainy day or if it's in the middle of a blizzard and you can't go outside. Experiment. Kind of keeps you you can turn it a little into a little color experiment. Let the kids mix pick their colors, things. mix the colors, see what happens. All right, well, who got knew? Me I'm going to keep eating this. It's good enough that I'm going to keep eating this over break. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. Thank <laughs> you.